Hey, what's up, gearheads? Welcome back to the show, Hammerhead Gearhead. Today is going to be a fun and exciting one because we are reviewing the Canon R6. See it? There you go. Closer. Ah, perfect. Okay, so I'm very excited for this episode for a good reason because for the past few weeks and months, I have been loosely and casually canvassing for a professional mirrorless camera that I can use exclusively for my shows for here on YouTube. I also had to weigh what I wanted. I know I don't want a cinema camera, so that would be the C70, C200, or even the Red Komodo, but I also don't want any just prosumer level camera because I want to be able to use it for my productions. I mean, I am a director also, so maybe it's photographer first, director second and vlogger third. So it has to be professional enough for that. And so I feel like the R6 fits the bill. The first camera that I reviewed prior would be the Fujifilm X-T4. So you can check out the review here, but today we're focusing on this baby. So exciting stuff, let's do it. So what am I looking for in this professional camera for vlogging? Probably what everyone else is in every single camera. I mean, let's admit it, we are very demanding and critical about cameras that come out. But I understand because we have very specific requirements. So in this case, let's qualify and illustrate that. So again, I don't need something that is cinema level, not the C70, C200 or Red Komodo level, but at the same time, it has to be professional enough Overkill for vlogging, definitely, because I want to be able to use it for my low-level, low-budget TVC work. So let's enumerate the features that I need. So first would be 4K60. I don't need 120 frames, but 4K60 is the bare minimum. I also want great color, great autofocus, good in low light, robust considering what I do, great battery life as well for on-location shoots, and also takes great photos. So yeah, seven. Again, it seems like what everyone is looking for, right? <laughs> let's see what the R6 has to offer. As per usual, let's start with the hard specs. The R6 is Canon's best-in-class mirrorless camera that boasts high frame rate, impressive ISO range, and longest battery life. It has a 20 megapixel full-frame sensor and processor similar to that of the 1DX Mark III. It has dual SD card slots, 5-axis in-body image stabilization, has the legendary dual pixel CMOS autofocus, that's version 2 in this camera, that covers the entire frame, has people, animal, face, and eye autofocus. It has a new power knob as well. It shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. It records this at 10-bit 422 with Canon Log. Okay, now for the fun part. The good thing is I was able to use the R6 for more than a month and I was able to film three episodes of Hammerhead Gearhead with it. So I'll be invoking some of those scenes for the tests that we will be doing. So let's hit it. One of the most important things for me on that list is color. And I've been a fan of Canon video color science for a long time now. And the R6 does not disappoint. If you don't believe me, here are the side-by-side -side of the raw footage taken with the R6 with the Nikon Z6 and the Fujifilm X-T4. And here they are with my custom LUT for Hammerhead Gearhead applied. Color is subjective, but for me, the R6 really shines here, and it goes without saying that image quality is impressive. Here is where it gets tricky. Meeting the base requirement of being able to film at 4K60 is all well and good, but the overheating is an issue for me. According to Canon, if I film at 4K30, which I'm doing right now, then with an Atomos Ninja 5 external recorder, which I'm doing as well, there are no limits. However, if I choose to film internally, then I only have 40 minutes before it overheats. And sometimes, you know, this is an issue because if I head out on the field and I don't want to bring a Ninja 5 because it's cumbersome and it's heavy and it's intrusive, then I have a problem and it's crazy because with my Nikon Z6, I do get these overheating issues from time to time, but all I have to do is turn it off and then on again and then we can continue. But with R6, I have to wait 10 to 20 minutes before I can use it again. And this is honestly a very tough pill to swallow. 
As a Nikon user, one of the things in the Canon system that I'm really envious of is the dual pixel autofocus. So I first discovered this when I saw a video on the Canon 1DX Mark II, I believe. And ever since then, I've been wanting it, especially since when I film my vlogs that I'm doing right now, I don't have a camera operator, so I rely fully and solely on the autofocus system of the camera. So the R6 features the dual pixel autofocus version 2 and has people priority, animal priority, face and eye detection. So let's put that to the test. Okay, so now we're shooting with the R6 so we can test out the autofocus system. I set it at no priority. So there are three options. You have people, animals, or no priority. I have it on no priority. And as you can see, it's pretty darn good. It sticks and when it sticks, it's sharp. Even if there's occlusion. That's really good. And let's try it with low light. Same. Wow. That's really something that is exceptional autofocus. Let's try another test. Okay, let's set the autofocus to animal priority. Checky, come here. Ah, there you go. And there it is. The autofocus is completely ignoring me, but it's tracking Chucky's eye really, really well. So if the autofocus is set to no priority and people obviously tracks me, but if it's an animal, priority completely ignores me. Let's try it with low light. It goes a bit crazy. Chucky, can you look up please? Here, here, Chucky. Here, still works, but it is shifting between me and Chucky. Nevertheless, that is still very impressive. Sometimes I'm out in the field and I have to film, but there is no available light, so it's dark, or we just couldn't use artificial light because it disturbs animals, or there are no ways to plug it, no battery sources, so I have to rely completely on the low light capabilities of the camera. Fortunately, I was able to test out the R6 when I filmed two episodes of Hammerhead Deerhead. One, I went crazy with the Pava tubes, swinging it around like a lightsaber, and then I filmed an unboxing in a dark studio. So in post, I was able to bump up the footage, the exposure by one stop, and then two stops, and the footage held fast. Image quality was still great. The Canon LPE6 NH battery really delivers. So this is rated for 16 watt hours or 380 shots, which is 70 shots more than with my Nikon Z6. And I was able to film 4K30 with it for an hour and a half, so I'm really, really happy with it. That said, my biggest issue with the R6 is the inability to use an external power source and amend the battery life through the USB-C port. So I have an FX Lion Nano 1 lithium ion battery and I tried connecting it through the USB-C port and it wasn't performing the way I was expecting it to. So it was not amending the battery life nor charging it while connected. So this is where I feel like Canon is lagging behind and where other mirrorless cameras are shining. So I hope Canon will be able to address this. Off the bat, I have to say that I'm really, really happy with the Canon RF lenses. So for example, right here, this is the 24 to 70. And this is the lens that I use the most for filming all of my episodes. And I'm really happy with the image quality that I got from it. The 15 to 35 as well, another great lens. But what really caught my attention is the 7200. This is the most compact and portable 7200 lens that I've ever seen. And I'm just really happy with these lenses. The only thing though that I'm not a fan of would be the external movement. Because considering what I do, where I shoot, sand, debris, and dust would definitely go in. So that's a valid concern. 
But aside from that, I really enjoyed shooting and filming with these lenses. Sadly and unfortunately, I wasn't able to test out the R6 in terms of photography. I got the demo unit mid-December and all throughout the holidays, I didn't leave. I just stayed indoors and filmed my vlogs. And um, this is unfortunate considering that photography is half of what I do. And I do hope I get to test it out in the future so that I can add more weight to my assessment. That said, this video is all about looking for a professional video camera for vlogging. And that's what we did with the R6. No beating around the bush, let's get right to it. So the R6 is a big improvement over my Z6 for two reasons. One is the colors. The color science is just luscious and the skin tones are just spot on perfect. Second would be the dual pixel autofocus version two. So for those two reasons alone, I would grab an R6. That said, there are certain things that dampen that. And first would be the overheating issue, the 40 minute limit when recording internally is a huge cause of her concern for me because when I'm filming outdoors, that'll be difficult to accommodate, especially since I have to turn off the camera, wait 10 to 20 minutes before I can start using it again. I mean, in most cases, I wouldn't even bring my Ninja 5 Atomos. So this is going to be a huge concern for me and the crew. Second would be the inability to extend the battery life via lithium ion battery using the USB-C port. So I hope Canon will be able to do something about that other than the obvious solution, which is DTAP to dummy battery. So these are the things that you have to weigh and balance out if you do decide or I decide to adopt this camera. And there you have it. That is my review of the Canon R6. Now I want to hear from you guys, especially the R6 users. How is your experience with the camera? Is overheating really a big issue, a big problem, or is it something that you can live with? What is your workaround for extending battery life since you can't use the whole lithium ion and USB-C cable option? Do you bring a DTAP to dummy battery connection or just multiple batteries in one shoot. So I wanna hear it, so let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more of my work, head on over to Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. Cheers guys, and I'll see you in the next video.